Today I'm going to show you some of the highlights of what's new in Xcode 12. Now I say highlights because anytime we get a brand new Xcode, there's a ton of little things that they add. For that, I'm going to link to the uh, release notes. Go ahead and scroll through that. It's very long. Have a ball. But for this video, we're going to focus on what I feel are some of the more common things that people are going to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. First, let's talk about this new look and feel of the design. Now, right away, I am on Mac OS Big Sur. I am risking it a little bit on the first beta. Uh, an, a question I got a lot on Twitter is, do I need to have Mac OS Big Sur in order to download the Xcode 12 beta? The answer is no. You can still be on Mac OS Catalina and download the Xcode 12 beta. Uh, you won't get this redesign, but you'll still be able to get all the features. So if you look here, the, you know, the play button, the stop button, the icons got redesigned over here on the right. We have the inspectors, you know, they're more spaced out. They, they got redesigned. Um, the sidebar here, one thing that helps, especially for me and, and maybe people that, you know, poor vision, I guess, is when I'm doing these videos, I got to like blow my screen up so you can see it, you know, on your phone or on your computer or whatever. Now, when you're doing your font, your code, you can do command plus and command minus. That's been around for a while. So that's easy to adjust. However, the navigator here on the left, you can never adjust that size even though I have like my largest font based on my display settings now you can change that so if you go to Xcode preferences here in general you can see navigator size right now I have it set to small uh, you can set it to whatever the system is so you can see that made it a little bigger now I can also set it to large and if you watch it it's gonna get a little bigger so see it's not like a, a crazy drastic change between small medium and large like to be honest with you I kind of wish it was more drastic like going from small to large doesn't I, I mean it feels different but it's not a, a crazy drastic change but uh anyway that's uh that's nice if you ever felt your navigator was way too small you can now adjust the size of that i'm going to leave it on large for you uh for you watching at home and speaking of sizing issues those of you that work on laptops if you go full screen right you have these inspectors on the right and the left and if you're in swift ui you got the preview like i'm on my imac 27 inch screen so things are spacious but on your a 13 inch macbook pro like things are tight so oftentimes you know you may click these icons in the left to get rid of the navigator and get rid of the inspectors just to have more room to work well the cool thing in xcode 12 is now if you have your inspector hidden just slide your cursor to the left and it slides out you know you can navigate you can search you can do all this stuff here that you normally could if that uh, navigator was always showing and then you go and it slides away it doesn't work with the inspectors on the right uh, to be honest with you, I don't know if that's intended or if maybe that's coming in a later beta version. Uh, I recommend if you're downloading like the official version of Xcode 12, not the beta, give that a try. Again, I don't know if that's intentional or not, but the inspectors don't slide out, but the navigator uh, does. And like I said, if you work on a laptop and you need that screen real estate, uh, this is this is a lifesaver. Now let's talk about app creation because now you can create multi-platform apps. So we'll create a little test app here. So file, uh, new project. And here you see, you have up at the top, multi-platform, iOS, Mac OS, et cetera. Let's do multi-platform, just make it an app and call this uh, test for video. Cool, hit next, uh, sure, save it to desktop and make these windows bigger here while this is uh, updating all this stuff. This is just a sample, uh, you know, a, a blank Swift UI. So what you'll notice here is app delegate, scene delegate, that's not a thing anymore. This is basically replacing your app delegate and scene delegate with this uh, at main uh, here. So basically this is now your uh, app life cycle. So that's pretty cool. Uh, let's get this. This is just the basic content view. But what you'll notice here, let me start minimizing some of these folders so you can see, is I have an iOS folder, a Mac OS folder, and a shared folder. So the purpose of this is the shared folder, that is all your common core UI for your app. However, if you have something that is, you know, Obviously, an iPhone screen and a Mac screen are very different, so your UI may need to change. So you can have specific files, screens, whatever, views uh, for iOS and Mac OS in these folders. So that'll help you build these multi-platform uh, apps. And the last thing I want to mention about app creation, or, or I guess app updating, uh, as you know, Apple Silicon is coming out if you didn't see a WWDC. However, that is going to be a transitionary period. So uh, your apps on the Mac are going to have to support Intel Macs and Apple Silicon apps. So the great thing about Xcode, as long as you build your project in Xcode 12, it's automatically going to build both binaries for, for both platforms. So you're going to be good to go there. And let's switch apps to GitHub followers here. And I'm doing this because I want to show off document tabs uh, because I need folders and all that stuff with a lot more files than that previous app had. So uh, now we're in the kind of like the workflow section of the video where I'm going to show you some new cool things you can do with your workflow. So the first thing is document tabs, which is a nice way to organize what you're working on. So in order to show the tab, you do view, 
uh, always show tab bar. And then what you see at the top here, GF button, I get this tab here. Now on uh, whatever file I wanna click, if I, you can option click it or you can double click it. I'm probably gonna end up double clicking it 99% of the time. So double click search VC, there it is. Now you have this tab, double click follower list. Now you have all these tabs and it doesn't have to be Swift files. Let's go to you know my XC assets. Cool, let's go to my P list, there it is. So now you can just go through these tabs at the top based on what you're working on. And if you want to like a whole section, like I'm closing these tabs now, like say I just wanted like all, all my screens in this app, I can drag the screens folder into the tab and it opens up all in new tabs. And so I got all my screens in the tab as I'm working. So like I said, it helps you organize what you're working on. And speaking of that organization, you can have like multiple editors with different sets of tabs. So if I click this plus button on the right here, this pulls up another editor side by side. And let's say I want my screens on that editor. So there they are. Uh, I can get rid of the GF button one. So those are all my screens. And then let's say I want my model on this editor, right? So I drag my model folder. So now I have in this editor, I can go back and forth between my model objects. And then in this editor, I can just, you know, navigate through all my screens. So again, it's a nice way to organize, you know, what you're currently working on at that moment. All right, so let's close out this editor, close out these uh, these screens we don't need. We're gonna talk about code completion. Now code completion is, um, I don't know, maybe maybe a little difficult to, uh, to showcase uh, here or the speed of it, but I'm also gonna show you like the simplified results here. So let's do this, this network manager, make a network call here. So network manager dot shared, again, the speed may not be coming across, but what I can show you is look at this, the simplified results. You know, sometimes you're getting that autocomplete and the autocomplete is like so long that it gets like truncated. Well, here we just get very simplified results for our autocomplete. So that's also new in Xcode 12. Now let's switch back to the Swift UI app to show you some of the stuff they got going on in preview. I'm gonna hide the uh, inspector to really showcase it here. So you'll notice above your preview, you have this new preview toolbar, and this is pretty cool. It just puts things that you commonly use, like just in a very convenient spot, right? You can run your preview right there. I mean, that was kind of below it, so that's not a huge change. Uh, you can run it on device by clicking this button right here, see preview on device. Uh, this is the cool thing. You can quickly duplicate previews. Like before, you would have to go down to your, your content you know, preview, type another one out or add one, like eh, a little, little tedious. Now you can just, we'll stop running this. Uh, now you can just click on this duplicate. There you go. You see the code got added right there and you see I have another uh, preview. And then right here, you can adjust the uh, environment of it or inspect preview, right? So I can go, look, uh, device can be, let's make this the uh, iPhone SE second generation. Uh, let's go with dark mode, right? So you can dynamic type, you know what? I don't even know if I did dynamic type on this app, but we're gonna do extra large, right? So you can tweak, it's kind of like the environment overrides. You can tweak your preview right here from this toolbar right above it. So it looks like I'm not really supporting dynamic type. This was a simple sample app, nothing crazy. But you can see in my previews, I quickly duplicated it and I quickly adjusted the environment uh, of it real quick. Change the phone, dark, dynamic type, all that stuff. So again, this preview toolbar that you see right here, very, very convenient. And last but not least, I know a lot of developers rejoice for this. Uh, we have store kit testing. Like store kit testing used to be a major pain. Uh, now you can test it without like deploying or staging your app, right? It, it's built right into the test. So. I actually don't have an app set up with in-app purchases that I can like show you this. Uh, so I'm gonna rely on the video from the State of the Union address uh, right here from Apple. But you can see you go to debug and then at the bottom you got that store kit option and you can see you have a bunch of options. Like you can manage your, your purchases, you can refund purchases. You'll see him like make a purchase here uh, and your app is updating in real time all from your tests. So that is much easier and much less of a headache than it used to be. All right, that's the highlights of Xcode 12. Like I said, check out the link in the description for the uh, actual release notes. If you really wanna dive in, it's very long and there's a lot of little stuff, uh, but this was the major highlights that I think a lot of people will use on a daily basis. All right, we'll see you in the next video.